Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. This is a very brief episode where um, we, we are going to build on top of our, um, our Minecraft Bedrock server that we built last episode. And I just want to show you a little technique before I get into the Blobfuse version of it um, that, that I didn't quite get to in my last episode. Um, so in the last episode, we built a Packer image. We provisioned a virtual machine with that image. And then to get, to get, the, to get the Minecraft server up and running, I used Bastion host to SSH into the machine and enable the service and start the service. What I wanted to show you is how you can start, do that post provisioning step. So remember everything, like the 90-10 rule, everything's built into the Packer, um, in, the, in the Packer image. So the VM just spins up and everything's there. Um, but what if, what if we have to do one last little thing before we're ready for the image to, to start up? Um, and so in this episode, I'm gonna show you how you can use a uh, feature in Azure called a virtual ma machine extension. These are small deployable applications that do pr post provisioning um, to your to your virtual machines. Uh, there's they come in various different types, and many of them implement their own functionality. Uh, but there is one in particular that we're going to be using today called the custom script extension, that is pretty handy. It lets you basically run a custom script. Um, either on Windows or on Linux. In this case, in this case, Linux. Um, this is dis distinct and different from the user data that would be embedded within Cloud Init. Um, but I thought I would just show you this um, to uh, to you know to take that last step of running System Cuddle enable and System Cuddle start on our service after the machine's up and running. So without further ado, let's let's get going. Uh, this is this is my project here. Uh, my VM is is no longer deployed. Let me let me pull it up in the portal and just look at it. So we got so we have a pip, we have an NSG, we have all the things. We just don't have a v, a VM. So we're going to provision the VM together. So here is our module that has our VM, but we need to add a resource for our virtual machine extension. So if we go look in the Azure RM Terraform provider documentation and just look up virtual machine, can I do extension? Are we that lucky? We are, <laughs> there we go. So the virtual machine extension resource basically provisions any virtual machine extension there is. It's one of those reusable resources in Azure. There's many of them. We looked at, in my very first episode, we looked at the, uh, what was it? The Azure Monitor Diagnostic Setting. The Diagnostic Setting hooks up Azure Monitor to any resource type. The Virtual Machine Extension hooks up, an ex like sets up an extension of any type to a virtual machine. That's what it does. Um, and so, the way you do this is by configuring the, some of the attributes within the virtual machine extension. Now, this is where you're going to have to RTFM. You're going to have to read the manual um, and find out you know, the, the key points. You'll see here the publisher, the type, and the type, type handler version. Unfortunately, many of the, many of the uh, places in our documentation are not super great. Um, so sometimes, um, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit this, um, the way I figure out how to configure my virtual machine extension is I go to the Azure portal, I try and provision something, and then I export the template in, in a resource group template format in JSON, and it's, a, it's got the exact same structure as this virtual machine extension. That's my sneaky little hack on how to figure out how to set these things up. Um, but Usually, uh, these have like a settings, and then there's there's a there's another there's another section called protected settings, um, which contains settings that are secret. So if you have to embed like a connection string or an access key or something like that, um, usually those get embedded in this protected settings uh, thing uh, attribute. Uh, but this the settings JSON blob is 
pretty much where most things go. Um, now, looking at the virtual machine extension for Azure, um, there's a lot of different options. And so with the, with the custom script extension specifically, um, we can do kind of like Packer, we can do an inline script, we can do a uh, script file that we embed. And, and the way that works is you basically do base64 encoding of the file contents and pass that in as, as a string value. Um, so you're really not uploading a file. It's really the you're encoding a string and you know passing it as a as an HTTP request. Um, you can actually use a file, uh, but you have to provide a URL that's publicly accessible on the internet. Because if you think about it, um, you tell Azure, "Hey, go run this script. This script is here. Azure is a, a service. It has access to the internet." It doesn't have access to your personal computer. It doesn't have access to some server somewhere. Um, so really, the, the file has to be publicly addressable. A um, good place to do that is a public blob or you know GitHub or something like that, where where you can access the file directly. Today, we're just doing a very simple command, like inline script. So it's going to be really, really, really simple. Um, but where where is the um, here it is custom custom script for well this is custom script for Windows yeah here we go custom script for Linux this is what we're using so there's some tips and tricks um, and here is the schema so again you can see kind of the settings and the protected settings and the most important ones are these the publisher type and the type handler version. Um, and we, I'm, I'm actually not even going to be using the latest version, but yeah. And then when you go look at settings, you can either use the command to execute, uh, reference to a script that's base, base 64 encoded or a file URL or URI that you can pass in. So as I mentioned before, it's all in the documentation. You just have to you know, know what you're looking for to, to find the right place. I'll, I'll uh, post a link to this uh, documentation um, in, in, in the video so, you, so you'll be able to access it very easily if you want to go um, modify the code and do that. Uh, so anyway, so uh, let's go back to the resource and let's see what we got. So, uh, oh, they, they're, they're actually doing a custom script extension, so I can just go snag the sample, okay? And we'll just call this local custom script extension. We'll get rid of the double quotes, because that's old school. Um, now the name, we'll just call this Minecraft Final Setup. Another, another important thing is you can only have one custom script extension. So it's not like you can daisy chain a bunch of these together on your VM or you, you can have multiple like custom script extensions execute. Um, it, se it seems like that would be a thing because you can have mo more than one custom uh, virtual machine extension. But if you think about it, that, that could, that, that, that opens so many, the door to so many problems um, in terms of like, well, which one should execute first? Um, and stuff like that. So yeah, not, not, not so great. We're going to get rid of tags. And this is kind of a funky syntax for a property um, type of JSON. And so it uses the, the caret caret and then settings. And then inside here, you can do, you can do JSON. Um, that's, that's kind of a, that's, that's some Terraform stuff going on there. So, so what we want to do is we want to do system cuddle enable MC bedrock. Okay. And basically that that's going to run it. Now we could do that. Um, I, I could probably set up, you know, multiple, multiple files here. Um, or mul multiple commands within, within, within an inline script. Um, but 
I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna instead of using an inline script, I'm just gonna create a scripts folder, and I'm gonna create a uh, what do we call this Minecraft post provision .sh. Okay, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this. So instead of command execute, it's just gonna be script, and then inside here. I'm going to embed, do some string interpolation, and we're going to use a function called base64 encode. And then we're going to use the file function, and it's we're going to use the I think it's got to be a double quote and then a path mod the path dot module which is a special string to where we are and it's going to be scripts and it's minecraft post prof dot sh and there we go let's make sure all of our all of our things all of our uh, parentheses line up here. Double quote. So that's the close of file. That's the close of basin code. So I think we should be okay. And so inside of our script here, we're going to do system enable MC bedrock remove system cuddle start MC bedrock. And this is going to, again, this is a function in Terraform file that's going to go grab the contents of that file. We're, we're giving it the path, you know, the, the path to the file by using this path module, which goes to Minecraft tester. And then we navigate to the scripts folder and then we get Minecraft postprov.sh. Um, we're taking the contents of that file as a string. We're encoding it using base64 encoding and we're good to go. And so like for here, we're going to run Terraform apply. Ah, oh, what I do? Ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> I forgot to set the VM ID. So now to reference the module, I just use the module prefix and then I use the breadrock local and then that module should be outputting an ID, which is the, the virtual machine ID. Okay, let's run Terraform apply. And this should provision two, two new things, our virtual machine and the virtual machine extension. Oh, we got a few more things. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the VM comes with a NIC and a PIP and, and probably a disk. So there's three things. Okay. Now, the trick about virtual machine extensions is sometimes a successful apply does not necessarily mean success. So what we're going to do is we're going to go look at the VM and look at the extensions. Provisioning succeeded, but that's still not good enough. Um, we need to look at, okay, so when we set up this, enable a service that creates a sim link, and then we start the service. So I think this should be okay. Let's just go um, connect to the machine via Bastion. And uh, what is it, admin user? Okay, so if we do sudo system, Cuddle status MC bedrock. Perfect. We can see that the service is running. So that 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 should be what we want. So now let's try and connect to it. Beautiful. So here we go. This is got some pumpkins. I'm gonna punch some pumpkins. So there we go. Um, we got um, our Minecraft. Our Minecraft server set up. 
Um, soup to nuts. The Packer image um, built, installed Minecraft, set up the service, set up everything that we needed, um, and got everything ready. And then we used a virtual, an Azure virtual machine extension to do the last step. Again, the 90-10 rule. So 90% of the work is done in the Packer image, which is captured yeah, as a machine image that we just spin up a VM with everything ready to go. And then the 10% the is in that little virtual machine extension where we just tickle the service and say, okay, enable the service and start the service. And when the machine boots up, it's, it's ready to go. And you've got, you've got a fully functioning Minecraft server. Um, with uh, with all with all the glory, you can drop ooh, some freezing cold water, so we can have a lot of fun in this world. Um, well, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, this uh, this is kind of puts the the final the final closing piece on our Minecraft server with local storage. Now we're the next episode we're going to look at Minecraft with an Azure storage backend. So we're going to use Azure Blob Storage to actually store the, the world databases um, so that if our virtual machine were to be deleted, it were to die, something bad were to happen, we can just go pop and spin up a new VM pointed at the same Azure storage account and we're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this content. Please give me a like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, and we'll be doing some more Minecraft using Azure. See you next time on Azure Terraformer. Signing out.